Hey there, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in to Finn's Workshop on YouTube. Hope you're having a wonderful day. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be talking about Shadow and the Empire of Light by Gina Rutley. Um, <sighs> this book, um, not one of my favorites this year, unfortunately. Um, I can tell you my initial reaction of reading this book when I finished it was, wow, that was a complete waste of my time. <laughs> it was just, it felt like a lot of nothing. It felt like nothing at all happened. And I was really, really interested in reading this book, to be perfectly honest with you. I received an from a publisher. I was like, yeah, awesome. So excited to read it. Nope. I, I couldn't get past the first two chapters when I was reading it. Because I had, you know, I had a digital arc and I was reading it. And one of the initial turnoffs for me was it lacked voice. I felt like these characters, Shine in particular, because she is your main protagonist. I felt like she just lacked substance. She lacked personality. She sounded very monotonous. I didn't hear any passion in her voice when I was reading the book. Um, and that's what really set me off. But you know what? I decided I was going to give this book a chance. Um, I decided, no, <laughs> like, I'm going to, I'm going to give this book a chance. But I'm like, let me try it in a different format. So I did. I had an Audible credit and I used my Audible credit to get the audiobook version of it. And I listened to it and I finished it. <sighs> Doesn't change my opinion of the novel. Uh, I really wish I hadn't get, given it a chance, but sometimes, you know, I do, sometimes, yeah, I kind of just get sick and tired of putting books on my do not finish pile, but you know what? I'm reading two books right now that are really good. I'm like going back and forth between them and I'm just like, I need to know what happens next in this one. I need to know what happens next in this one. So I'm like splitting my time up between them and I'm like flying through them. And that just highlights to me, you know, I could have read these books earlier if I had just put this Shadow in the Empire of Light in my did not finish pile. I'm really mad I didn't. This book makes me angry. And this is why. When I was reading the book, Shine sounded like a 16 year old. You know, she sounded 16. When I was listening to it, and I start, I restarted it from the beginning, um, didn't change my impression of her, but she sounded older. She sounded like... She was in her 20s, I want to say, you know, so she sound, she sounded older. I don't know if that's because of the production of the audiobook. You did, they did get an older person, but I don't think that should have so much of an influence on it because I do read audiobooks. I do, read young, I, I do listen to audiobooks. I do listen to young adults. Yeah, you have these voice actors, but I feel like they capture the spirit of the character, so you're never really confused about what age group they're in. And when I re read this book, it was, I believe it was given to me as a young adult fantasy. I think that's how I looked it up. Um, but if you, on Goodreads, it, do, it does say that, but on Edelweiss, it does not list it as you know, young adult fantasy it just says fantasy. And if you go to your local bookstore, it's you're not going to find it in the young adult fantasy section. Young adult science fiction section is going to be in the science fiction fantasy section. You know, where they keep all the Star Wars books and Dune and Drylands. Um, that's where you're going to find it. So I think there's a lot of inconsistency with the voice of the character. And I think it translates as well to how you market the book. And that's what caught me off guard because I wasn't really drawn in by this, by Shine's voice and her internal narrative. I was very confused because she reads like she's younger, but when you're listening to it, she's clearly older. And I think she's meant to be older. Given the context of the story, she is supposed to be older. She's not supposed to be sound like she's 16. And I think that just shows a lack of inconsistency with the author's writing. 
other than that, she was also very bland. Like I said, I could not relate to her at all. And I felt such a shame at that because this is clearly a character who's, you know, she's dismissed by a majority of her family because, first of all, she's um, an interracial child. Second of all, she's not a mage. So, she, her, her mother pretty much vanished when she was a babe, so her mother kind of abandoned her. And she grew up with this very, her family's terrible. I mean, they are absolutely horrible people. You get that through the story, as the story's developing. But also, when I'm reading the story, I felt like nothing happened. So again, I couldn't really relate to Shine because she's your main protagonist. She's supposed to be driving the story forward. She doesn't really drive the story forward. And I was just like, what? And there were also times when I was like very angry at her because she's trying to help her cousin, Clea. And I liked Clea. Clea, I did like. Um, Clea I liked and my favorite character was Caddy, the cat, the telepathic cat. Loved Caddy. Caddy was great. Um, and Clea I thought was good too. You're able to really connect to Clea because she's gone through so much pain and she's trying to do what's best for her future children. But I couldn't stand Shine because she understands how horrible her family is and yet she's just super hypocritical she's like yeah i understand your uncle raped you and all when you were a child but why wouldn't you still keep your your kid in the family like um why why would she your other cousin already once raped your male cousin because she really wants to get knocked up like her family is obsessed with blood purity and creating more mages because there's a they, she's part of the royal family, basically. She's a direct descendant of the royal lineage, and they really want more female mages. They really want to keep producing more mages, female particularly. So why would she want to have her child in this family? I should. I certainly wouldn't. If I were her, I, I would do exactly what Clea did. Every decision Clea made... 100% understand it and I could not stand the hypocritical judgment tone coming from shine because it's like you're not naive you know how horrible your family is you're spending so much time with your male cousin to protect him from your female cousin who keeps trying to rape him I mean you're you're not you are aware of your family's cruelty and yet you're judging her for the decision she made to give her daughter the best chance and better life? Like, come on. I, I was really very angry at Shine for that. And I kind of hated her after that. So I think after that poem, that moment, but of course that moment doesn't happen until like 75% of the book, into the book. After that moment, I was like, okay, now I really don't care for you. Because she's just... Uh, for most of the story, she has no voice, she has no passion, she lacks substance. She's just like, you would think you could relate to her given everything she's gone through. You abandoned her mother, pretty much abandoned her. We think, maybe, we don't really know what happened. Um, and she's been mistreated by her family for years because she's, what, she's one, interracial, and two... She's not magical. So they really do think quite less of her. So you would think you could relate to her, but she just lacks passion. And also the story, you get a semblance of her. She wants to explore the world. She does no exploration. This entire story takes place during the Fertility Festival. And it was literally just one sex scene after another. And that's not my cup of tea. I'm going to say... I know that there is an audience for that, to each their own. Some people like that. I'm not one of them. I'm just not. I, I want more. I need more than just one sex scene after another. It's just like, great, 
another orgy. Awesome. More, uh, more hand jobs, more, more fingering, more. Okay. I'm kind of sick of it at this point, you know, like, come on. I don't, mm, I guess you could call me a prude. Maybe I am a prude, but that's just my personal preference. When I'm reading a book, I don't mind sex being in the book. Um, like Sarah J. Mass. I love her stories, but it's not one sex scene after another. You know, there's a bigger story happening around it. And with this one, I wanted there to be a bigger story, but it also just seems to be obsessed with sex. Not my cup of tea. Was not a fan. And that's probably another reason why I was totally turned off from it. Because that's just what the story felt like. I wanted more on Clea. I wanted more uh, history with her mother because it's just like, oh yeah, if we help Shadow get back to the ghost lands, because that's what they call them, because they're super pale, not because they just call them ghosts. That's just their name of their race. Um, maybe we can find out what happened to your mother and you'll get to see the world. Right, so that's kind of how the story starts. So you think, great, she's going to help ghosts escape. She's going to help him get home. She's going to find out what her mother, what happened to her mother and go on this great adventure. Except nothing happens. Nothing happens. She's stuck at home trying to retrieve a letter that could harm her cousin Clea. Unearthing dark family secrets. I uh, like, come on. I, I expected more given the opening. You know, given the establishment of the plot, I wanted more. I expected more than just one sex scene after another. I was just it's like, okay, we'll leave after the blessing ceremony. Like, okay, when is this blessing ceremony going to end? It's for Chilean Day Festival because I'm kind of sick of it. You know, I want her to find out what happens to her mother. I want her to explore. I don't want her to be trapped. That's what I wanted for Shine. I didn't want her to be trapped, and it's just like nothing happened. Even the ending, I can't even remember it because it was so unmemorable. I just remember being, that's it? That's how the story ends? Listening it to my, it, on my headphones, and I'm like, are you kidding me? It was so, oh, it was honestly a complete waste of my time. I should have just stuck with my initial instinct and just stopped after, you know, <laughs> chapter three. I should have just not bothered to give it another chance, but I did. I thought, you know, maybe I'm just not reading it in the right format. Let's try again. Horribly disappointed. Um, I was just not thrilled with the overall storytelling. I really wasn't. I was... I could have gone my entire life without reading this book and I would have been happy. Um, I do thank the publisher for giving me a copy. Thanks. Um, but it just was not my cup of tea. And I feel like there's a lot of inconsistencies with the internal narrative. I felt like it lacked voice, it lacked passion, it lacked characterization, it lacked a str solid, strong story with a little bit more substance. It was just lackluster on all fronts, unfortunately. So I do have to give Shadow and the Empire of Light one out of five stars. Sorry. It was just, ugh. It was not for me. I did not like it. I did not care for it. Sorry. But you know what? My opinion is my own. You might like it. It might be your cup of tea. So I do recommend checking the book out from your local library. And if you like it enough to support the author, please support them by purchasing the book. Another way to support the author is by leaving reviews if you do end up liking the book. On that note, I hope you all continue to support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also become a supporter on Buy Me a Coffee or by purchasing one of my handmade candles. There is, There are links in the description below. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, happy reading.